Hey there, I'm Erin from Nubby Notes, and today we'll be making Rover's briefcase from the game Animal Crossing New Horizons. In the game, this is the briefcase that Rover gives you for completing the Mayday event. I started off with 12 sheets of 9 by 12 inch paper, which I then folded in half with my bone folder. Off camera, I used my stack cutter to cut the sheets to about 6 by 4 inches. Next, I separated the folios or folded sheets into groups of three. For this notebook, I used eight groups of folded sheets that are also known as signatures. For the covers, I cut out three pieces of chipboard and three pieces of a dark brown cardstock. I then used my PVA glue to glue on each chipboard piece to the brown cardstock. If you're interested in the dimensions of each cover piece, the front and back covers were six by four inches and the thin chipboard piece was six inches long and one inch thick, or the thickness of the stack signatures. I did the same thing for all three cover pieces and here's how they turned out. Now for the corners of Rover's briefcase, I cut out these circles from a lighter brown cardstock, which I then cut in half and then glued to the corner of each cover. After adding corners to the other cover, I lightly marked six dots along the rounded edge of each corner for extra detail. I then took this brown paint and a fine paintbrush to paint over the marks that I had made earlier. And after adding details to each corner, here's how they turned out. I recreated Rover stickers in Procreate before playing around with them in the CryCut design space. After placing the stickers the way that I had liked, I cut them out with my CryCut machine. As always, there will be links to the stickers in the description box below for both CryCut and non-CryCut users. I had to do a lot of adjusting to get the stickers the way that I had wanted. At first, the stickers were printed on the wrong side, and then the stickers were too big. Finally, I had resized the stickers to a size that I had liked and was able to attach all of Rover's stickers to the front and back covers. My cry cut added some white borders around the stickers, so I used an X-Acto knife to clean up the edges. For the suitcase handles, I was figuring out how to make them as I was making them. I ended up using some thin chipboard for strength and then sandwiching them between two pieces of brown cardstock. Rover's briefcase has these metal pieces to connect the handles, so I found these metal earring backs that I super glued to the handles. I ended up using two metal earring pieces for each handle. And then I covered each handle with another piece of brown cardstock. For extra strength, I glued the handles to a thin piece of chipboard and then sandwiched on another piece of chipboard. I used my scissors to snip off the ends and then the handles were done. Then I took each handle and carefully glued them to the tops of each cover, while also making sure that the handles were centered along the top. Off camera, I covered the inside of each cover with brown cardstock. Next, I lightly marked and punched the binding holes along the edges of both the front and back covers. Each binding hole measured about an inch apart. Then I took another awl to widen the binding holes. And using my handle, I flattened each hole. 
For the signatures, I used a ruler to lightly mark the binding holes, with these holes again being about one inch apart. And with my awl, I punched out each hole while making sure to keep the signatures in the same order that I marked them in. After leaving about an eighth of an inch gap between the covers, I used some painter's tape to hold them in place, and then I was ready to bind. For this project, I followed this tutorial by Sea Lemon. This video is perfect if you're looking for a step-by-step -step tutorial on this binding. Once the covers were bound, I carefully took off the painter's tape. And with that, we were ready to bind the signatures. While still following Sea Lemon's tutorial from before, I used a white thread to attach the signatures to the cover. To finish off the binding, I knotted the end and snipped off any excess thread. And with that, Rover's briefcase notebook is finished. And here's the final reveal. If you decide to make your own Rover's briefcase notebook, I'd love to see them. Feel free to tag me at Nubby Notes on both Instagram and Twitter. And if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so, so much for watching. Until next time.